What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the Wayne Scott series here. This is video number eight in this series. And like always, if you missed the previous videos, I'll have a playlist link in the description so you can go check those out. Now I've been getting a couple of comments from people saying, hey, this is taking a lot longer than they expected. And trust me, it's taking a lot longer than I expected as well. But one thing I realized is that this is not a race to show you how fast I can do this. As there's no really benefit in that. The whole purpose of this is to teach the tips and tricks that I know, I'm, I'm not an authority on this. I'm just showing you what I know, what works for me. So it's gonna take a while to get through this. And with that, it's video eight. We're building our first unit here. So come along for the ride, soak up as much information as you can. And I know a lot of you guys already know most of this stuff and I appreciate you watching the videos as well. So let's get right into it and build our first unit. And just real quickly on that note, I wanted to answer one other question that has come up frequently, and that is how long would this take us in a real world situation without any delays or distractions on a job site to complete a room of this size for this project that we're taking on here of this wainscot? Well, if you take in the wainscot, the door casings, casing the window, and heck, we'll even throw in the crown, I would say three days for this project and that would be supplying all materials, installing everything, prepping everything and painting everything and that would be with an airless sprayer. And that would be two people, that would be me and John and he usually takes care of all the prepping and we kind of just put our headphones on and fly. So this is new for me too, this has taken a while, I'm not used to it but a lot of people are getting value out of it so I think it's worth it. Like I mentioned, we're gonna build our first wainscot unit in this video and we're gonna go ahead and build it on the original wall that we snapped the lines on. This is the easiest wall in the entire room and I think it'll give you a good starting point for how to assemble these units. They're really easy and this is really the easy part. The hard part is done for us. We figured out all the math. I'm not gonna talk about any panel dimensions or anything. Since this is a series, I'm gonna assume you already know what's going on here. For the people that have been following this from video one, they don't want to hear all this again. That's been done. We're ready to get to work. Now, one other thing I'll mention is that with these walls having these lines snapped on them and this whole unit kind of sketched out on here, it really gives you a feel for what you're trying to accomplish. And I like doing this. I recommend it so much, especially for a first timer, because everything at this point is still subject to change. I can still move things around. This isn't permanent. I haven't even cut a single board yet, but yet I have a feel for how this looks. Now the reason I bring that up before we get started is because we are about to cut our first board. So make sure this is what you want. Now in video one, I snapped a line about eight inches up from the floor and that represented the top of my bottom rail. Well, I changed my mind on that. This is a great tool because it gives you a feel for it. And I drawn some other lines and I thought about it, played with it in my head a little bit, and I decided to bring my bottom rail up another inch and three quarters. And the reason I did that is because the reveal here from the cove here to the bottom of the top rail is four and three quarters. And I wanted that same reveal on the bottom rail. Now, if you're going to make an adjustment like that, like me bringing my bottom rail up another inch and three quarters, Make sure it's not gonna interfere with any obstacles at this point too before you start cutting. So go ahead and put a plate cover on. You can trace it out and then you'll be able to see where it's gonna land and then make sure you have some space in between the bottom rail and your plate cover or whatever obstacle you're working around because the last thing you wanna do is cut one of these it is just not attractive. Um, one other thing too, Make sure your panel moldings aren't gonna interfere with this as well if you're going to use panel moldings, which is pretty much any kind of trim on the inside of the panel. So figure that out, and now that I know exactly what I want, now we can make some cuts. Now the first step in building this unit is getting our measurements. We need to get a length on the top rail, the bottom rail, and the vertical styles here in the middle between the top and bottom rail. Now the vertical styles in the middle, they're unique in the fact that whatever I measure from this blue line right here to this blue line, that stays the same for the whole job, for the whole entire job. And what I'll usually do is set up a stop block and cut all the vertical styles for the whole room. And I recommend you do the same because when you go to pocket hole the top rail and bottom rail to the vertical styles, you're not gonna have any that are too short or too long. So to get our length of our top rail, I'll just stretch my tape out across this wall here. 
put it against that wall, and then I'll go up against the casing. Anytime I can go reading up against the casing, I always do that because I have a clear line of sight. And for this, we will go 87 and 5 eighths. Same thing for the bottom rail. Just gonna drop it down and make sure it's the same. And we'll go 87 and 5 eighths. Those are the exact same links right there, which makes it easy for us. Now we'll get a measurement on our vertical styles. So this blue line right here represents the bottom of my top rail. This blue line right here represents the top of my bottom rail. This dimension right here from line to line is exactly how long I need to make my vertical styles. So to get that, I'll simply just put my tape measure on this top blue line and get a reading at the bottom one. And I am dead on 24 inches, which is perfect because you know most materials come in four, eight, and 16 foot lengths when it comes to this kind of work. So with that, I'll maximize material usage and have less waste. I didn't plan it out like that. It just worked out perfectly to have them 24 inches. So this is great. I'm gonna cut all my vertical styles now at 24 inches. So when you're setting up your saw to make these repeatable cuts with the material stop, here's what I recommend you do. It, it helps me a lot. And once I started doing this, it was easy to get it dialed in. Put your saw down in the closed position where it's like that, like you're gonna store it away. And then come on the other side and stretch your tape measure out, push it up against the blade, and then you can move your material stop to exactly where you want it, and then you can lock it in place. I've already got mine locked in place right here but that's just the easiest way that I figured out how to do it. So we'll go ahead and cut our top rail, which is a one by six, and we'll cut that down to 87 and 5 eighths. So here's what we end up with for the first unit. Again, one by six top rail, one by eight bottom rail, one by four vertical styles. And I just laid this out roughly so you could see it. And this will be elevated up off the floor and we're gonna just shoot a laser line and put this in in one piece. But first to get it in one piece, we're going to pocket hole the back of all these vertical styles right here. Each vertical style will get two pocket holes on both ends and then we'll be able to attach it to the top and bottom rail. What I like to use for the pocket screws are inch and a quarter coarse thread pocket hole screws. These are Craig screws and coarse thread is usually used on softwoods, which is what we use MDF and finger joint pine a lot of times. So what I like to do is take these screws and I like to just preload them into the holes and I just push them in like that. That way I don't have to fuss around with them when it comes time with my clamps and everything like that. So now that I have all of those loaded up, what we can do is begin the assembly. One question I will answer though is the question of why don't you just nail these to the wall? Like what's the purpose of pocket hauling them? Well, if you have that question, what I want you to do is take a straight edge, could be a level or a straight board, and hold it against any wall in your house. And that should answer the question for you because no wall is perfect. And when you're trying to line up two materials that you want to be flush on something that isn't perfect, it's really hard to do, you'll have to use shims. It's just really weird, a big waste of time. I've tried it and it's this is the, the better way. If you don't wanna use this, you could use a plate joiner and biscuits. So it's just a biscuit joiner and that will hold the two materials flush. But what I like about the pocket holes versus that is that you can build it and like set it in place all as one. So this is my preferred method. So what I'm gonna to do to begin the assembly 
is just get my bottom rail, stand it upright, just right here, and then take a vertical style and place it at the end. I want the edge of this vertical style to sit flush with the edge of this bottom rail. Then I'm gonna take my clamp. This is the Automax clamp from Craig. It's awesome because you don't have to adjust anything except the tension on it. So it doesn't matter how thick the material is, it will hold the tension that you set it to. So I, like this is three quarters, I could have it, um, I could have these as one inch boards and the clamp is gonna be the same tension. So I'll just squeeze this once I have it flush. And if I don't have it perfectly flush, what I can do, a little trick is just roll this around and I can scoot it over. Like if I pull this to the left, this clamp, it'll actually scoot the board over and then I can feel when it's flush with my hand. And if I push it down to the right, it'll pull the piece over. So I don't know if you could see that. There's a big um, edge right here now that I turned it to the right, but if I pull it to the left, I could slide it over. So it's a little handy trick so you don't have to get it dead on when you clamp it. You can kind of micro adjust it with the clamp itself. And then at this point, I'll just drive those two screws in. So the reason we use two pocket screws is so this doesn't have any twist factor in it. If you just use one, this board would still want to twist. No matter how tight you tighten that pocket hole down, it'll have this factor to it. But with the two pocket holes, it's not going to do that because obviously there's two. And the next step is to go to the other end over there and do the same exact thing. Get it right flush with the edge of the bottom rail and then we'll put the middle styles in. The middle ones, I'm not even going to talk about the math because like I mentioned in video number three, I explain everything of how I got to this point. What we can do to help us get these middle ones installed very precisely is use a spacer block. So the spacer block is cut to the inside dimensions that we already figured out for our panels and we're just going to push the spacer block against the vertical style over here and then we're going to grab our next vertical style, push that against the spacer block and then we'll grab our clamp and clamp this on right here. And then we can just work our way down. We can push up against this style and then hold this board. <laughs> Same thing with the spacer block. And then we'll check something out real quick. I'll hold this in place. And this should fit right here. Perfect. I've got it set up to where I want the unit to be leveled and now I can just shim it up but I should have made it tight enough to where it'll actually stay in its place if I put it on this side first and then just push it in on the wall over here.
This gap down here will be covered by a base molding, but to keep it from tilting, what we'll do is we'll throw like a thin strip in here, just something that's the same thickness as the bottom rail, and that'll allow the base to not be tilted when we shoot it into the bottom plate of the framing back there. And this will also have a cove molding on top of it like that. So that's an idea of kind of the finished look at the bottom here. But from here, it's basically just nailing on the rest of this off and finding the studs. If you remember at the beginning of the series, I said we pretty much use a 1x8 for our bottom rail like 90% of the time because we always have whatever width of base to hide whatever's left over. So there's really no use in buying like a 1x12 bottom rail because the, the rail is going to float anyways up off the floor because this is what's keeping us level right here, this laser. So that's how I do it and it seems to work pretty good for me. Now most of these nails right here will get covered by the cove that's going to go in, go in there because I'm going to have a 1x2 cap and then this cove up in there like that. And the same thing for the bottom, I'm going to find the studs and then shoot down here so it gets covered by the baseboard. All the nails in this corner will be hidden by the next unit that covers it up if I put them in the corner. So there you go, there's our first Wayne Scott unit for this room and it's always a good feeling to be at this point and to see it actually come together. It's no longer just lines on the wall and now we can get a real visual on it. And I love it, I love the proportions. I'm looking forward to building the rest of these, these units which actually is the next step in this process. And then we're gonna go ahead and trim everything out, which is my favorite step. So hopefully you'll come back for those future episodes, but that's gonna do it for this one. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for your support. And let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and I will see y'all on the next episode. Take care.